everyone, Rose Wildsmith here and today I'm going to show you some of my favourite sketchbook spreads and talk to you a little bit about the techniques that I used and the different layers that you can see. So in this one I can see that there's some biro writing underneath as I like to do morning pages or stream of consciousness writing in my sketchbooks. There's also some paint that's gone over the top of that that's translucent so it could be watercolour or acrylic so it's kind of like a rainbow of translucent paint. And then there's this blue Posca pen, which you can see. So I've done a line drawn pattern over the top of that. And then I've come in on the top layer with this black pattern. So to do that, I draw the shapes first and then I go in and, and I fill in the background with black. It looks like this one was done with a fine liner so it would have taken quite a long time to fill it in. Sometimes I use Posca pen which is a bit quicker but I went through a phase of liking to use the fine liners because you can get really intricate details. I really like this because I feel like it's really striking with the black and then the, the bright colours and there's lots of depth with the different layers. So next up we have this one and I can tell that some of this is acrylic paint that I've painted on with a paintbrush and it looks like it was stuff that was left over on a palette from when I was painting on a, a big canvas. So I've just very roughly painted it on. You can see the brush marks and you can see how loosely it was painted on and that's something that I actually really love about this spread. This looks like watercolour but it could be watered down acrylic and same with this pink here and then I've come back in and this is oil pastel I think it looks like I've just done that and then smudged it a little bit and this pink I think is also oil pastel or oil stick it could be oil stick rather than oil pastel actually because it's it's quite dry now and there's more of that metallic pink oil stick here as well. I really like this one because it's very striking and I really like the looseness of it as well. My perfectionist brain always wants to go very intricate and, and detailed and tight but actually I really love it when I'm able to be really loose. Okay so this is the next spread and this is one of my favourite spreads that I've ever done I think. So I started out with some writing underneath and then I think I had some acrylic paint blending different colours together over the whole page and so there's a translucency about it because you can still see the writing through it and then the top layer is this purple and silver and so what I would have done is started with the shapes and I started in the middle to try and make it sort of symmetrical. So I started with these middle sections and then worked outwards. So you can see by the time I get right to the end, it's not exactly symmetrical anymore. Then I will have come in and filled in the background with a purple Posca pen. And the great thing about Posca markers is that they're very opaque. So it really, really covers up everything underneath very well. And then it makes it look like these pieces that are actually underneath are kind of floating on top of this very flat purple background. And then I would have come right at the end and outlined all of the shapes in the silver. I think I love the colours in this one and I feel like it's a very striking symmetrical composition as well. There's something nice about the colours with the, the teal being very intense in the middle and it kind of spreading out to this purpley magenta and blue colours at the edges. I think this is just a great example of how serendipity plays a huge role because I didn't know where I was going with this spread, I wasn't being intentional with it at all, but I was just playing and then in the end I came up with something that I really love. So it's just one big happy accident, but I really Really love it. Okay so the next spread I can see there's biro I think or fine liner underneath. I think that's in the very first layer and it looks like scribbles so it could be that this was my daughter. <laughs> Sometimes when she was you know two or three she'd want to have a go in my sketchbook and so I'd just give her a pen and let her. When she was very little that was all that she was able to do was kind of scribble. So that could have been her, it could have been me, it could have been me trying to like warm up. And then this piece here is actually a piece of paper that I've stuck on. There's these fine liner marks that I made a repeat pattern and now I've come and stuck that on. I must have done that before the scribbles because the scribbles are going over the top of that. And then we've got some acrylic paint and it looks like what I've done is scraped it on with a credit card or squeegee, a little blob of paint and then scraped it across. And then you get these rough marks here when the paint is almost run out on the squeegee and you kind of like 
really try and clean off the squeegee onto your page. So that's where the pink and the red and the yellow come from. And then there's this snakeskin yellow pattern that's over the top. And that comes from a roller that I got that has, it's kind of like a stamp, but on a roll. And so you can put it into some paint and then roll it across your page. And that's what I did here. And I got this repeat pattern just from rolling. And then the very last layer is the teal Posca pen. This is a semic writing or doodling. <laughs> I like to do this because I have a bit of an obsession with written languages, not only English and the like Roman alphabet, but I've spent a little bit of time studying Chinese and Hindi. So I learned a little bit about the different shapes that go into those writing systems as well. And also music. I spent a long time when I was a kid learning to read and write music. So I bring in all those different shapes and I add them all together. It's a meditative exercise really, just sitting down and like doodling and seeing what comes out. And I really like this spread, I think because of the vibe vibrancy of the colours and I like the composition. I like the writing just being in little sections and the fact that you can see all this other visual texture underneath. All right so this is a spread that I did during I <laughs> I made up an Instagram challenge called Godtober because in the autumn I absolutely love these warty bumpy lumpy pumpkins that you get or they're called gourds and they come in lots of different shapes and colours and stuff and so I challenged myself to draw some gourds every day of the month in October and I challenged other people to join in. So this is one of those days and I did this drawing here but before I did that there were already some layers on the page so we have some writing underneath that I think is the first layer and then I did this red and pink that all comes from acrylic paint that I've scraped on with a squeegee like in the last one and then I have drawn the gourds on top with the fine liner and then what I've done is I've come in with some gesso and smudged some gesso in to make the background recede a little bit and make these stand out because these are more vibrant now and this it adds a, a bit of a foggy film over the rest of the page so then it looks like I've gone back into my drawing of the gourd with a Posca pen and some pastels to just emphasize certain parts of the drawing and then I probably want back over it all with a fine liner at the end to make sure that the lines are all complete. So then I think I finished that first and then this was a piece of collage that I found. So I had a little tin given to me as a gift that had make your own bug hotel inside and this was part of the instructions. So I cut this little strip and stuck that in and then this is a piece of washi tape that I stuck over the top. And the thing I like about this spread is the drawing mostly. I really like this technique. I really like doing line drawings and then when you are able to do this thing with the gesso to make the background recede, it makes these come to life. So this is the next spread and this has quite a few different media. I can see that there's biro or fine liner underneath here somewhere. Let's see little bits of drawings. Then there is some watercolour and because I can see there's some watercolour and I know this is the sketchbook that I used when I first moved to Amsterdam and I didn't have all of my art supplies with me. I just had a very basic set and one of the things I had was watercolour. Then I can see that there's oil pastel with this gold and that has ended up working as a bit of a resist when I've come back over with other media. I can tell that there's acrylic on here, this magenta colour here, done with the technique again, where I put a spot of paint on and scrape it with a squeegee. Looks like this green is also oil pastel. This black is also acrylic paint that I've scraped on with a squeegee. And then we have a layer of Posca. So we've got this pink Posca here, pink Posca here, gold dots, the, this is Posca. And this is Posca that's smudged. This blue is also Posca. And I think that green might be a bit of Posca as well. And then the very final thing is this gold dragonfly, which is a collage. So what I really like about this is I like the colour combinations. I like the, the magentas, the greens. And I also like that there's lots of different layers. And so there's lots of interest to look at. There's lots of things that you don't notice until you look further. And I also quite like the composition of this arch and these things are all pointing into the middle. So yeah, pleased with that spread. Okay, so this spread 
this is one of my earliest ones and I started it with some acrylic paint that I had left over on my palette from the very first painting workshop I did and it looks like I was using maybe a slightly smaller paintbrush in this at this moment and so I was just wiping off my brush onto the page and that's what this red and this red over here is and I think that yellow is also maybe that was on there first actually but yeah so the yellow and the red paint that was the first layer of just trying to scrape things off my palette and then I've come back in with more acrylic paint after it's dried and I can tell that this teal and the green that was all added later and maybe it was added with a little bit more care it looks like I've maybe considered the composition a little bit more because the first layer was just like you know very messy like get rid of the paint onto the paper then there's some Posca pen so the yellow the pink this yellow line here and this orange line of spots there that looks like those are all Posca pen and it looks like there's a bit of splattering here as well which may have not been intentional but I think it adds a nice dimension so I think that the thing with this is I love the looseness of it again I really love the colors and the composition and there's another element of serendipity here I would never have come up with this spread intentionally it was just a case of working with what I had adding more layers and it just kind of emerged I think it's really lovely because it's so loose and expressive and that's what I'm always striving for in my work now this spread I find this very interesting because I absolutely love this spread and it's very very, very simple and I think that's one of the things I really love about it. So the first layer is this orange paint and that looks like watered down acrylic that I have smushed on very loosely probably because I had it left over on my palette and I just wanted to use it up and so that was my, the, my basis. And then I found this in a magazine and I cut it out. So this is actually someone is wearing a t-shirt. Um, their head was here or something. And this is something that they're looking at. Anyway, I really like the black and white and the, the shapes and everything. And I stuck that down. And then I came back in with the black Posca pen and was inspired by these black lines. And so I just carried on with the black lines and allowed the the feel of the piece to kind of expand with with the lines that I was drawing and then when I got to this stage I just thought oh I just love it like that it's very simple but I just think it's so bold and expressive and there's something really nice about having something that's very simple and also that's something you love so yeah I'm really pleased with this spread okay so this one it looks like I started out again with acrylic paint that I had left over on my palette. I can tell that this yellowy green, that there was this blue here. I was obviously using quite a big brush with the blue. It looks like I just went Ch -ch -ch -ch. and then maybe came up back in with another layer with the green. It could be that I did it all at the same time and they melded together a little bit. And then it looks like I came in with this pinky salmon colour and I don't know whether this was, um, again, just wiping off my brush. It looks like it could be. So then I ended up with three layers without thinking about it, just using up the paint that I had. And then what I've done is I've come back in with red. This is acrylic paint again. And this is a paintbrush. And I've just used the shape of the paintbrush to stamp these little, little things all over the page. And then the final layer is this Posca pen. So I've got the blue, green, red, green there, the blue. This is all Posca pen. I think that it's really nice when you've got something really loose to then go in with something kind of intricate. And that's what I feel the Posca pen adds to this. Kind of a bit more considered and you can really think about the composition. You can think about the colours. And actually, this is not a palette that I would have chosen myself, but I really like it. There's something really cool about it, but these are colours that I would never usually pick on my own. So I think there's something really nice about the serendipity of it as well. But I really like the looseness and then contrasting with this very detailed work. And that's one of the great things about Posca pens is that they're so opaque that you can go over other stuff that's quite dark with a very light colour and, it, and it's opaque, it, it sits over the top. So I think that works really well this spread it started with some collage so I've got 
some typewritten text there that I've it's a piece of paper that I've stuck in I think it's a knitting pattern actually so this is or an embroidery pattern this grid black and white grid that's underneath that was also stuck in as a piece of collage and then I've scribbled over the top with water soluble wax crayons the neo colors neo color twos so I've scribbled over the top with different colors and then I've come in with some gesso and rolled it on and because the gesso is wet it activates the the crayons a little bit and it kind of smushes them around and you end up with this grungy sort of feel then i started with this strip here this is actually a paper cut so what i did was i took a piece of paper from a toilet roll wrapper and i folded it in a concertina so the the, the size of the concertina would have been about the size of these little figures and then I folded it in a concertina all the way along and then I came in and I cut the shapes out and then you open it up and you've got like a paper chain of little little figures so then I stuck that down on the page and then I started to come in with the black and fill in behind it looks like I did that with a fine liner and I think I was originally intending to fill it in all the way across but then I got to here and I quite liked, because of the paper that I used, it has a kind of swirly pattern on it. I thought that it might be nice for the black to feel like it's swirling. I think it's a really nice combination with the crayon underneath that's kind of in a swirly whirly thing. And then this paper has a swirly whirly pattern. Um, and then I've got the black kind of doing a similar thing as well. So my daughter actually said, wow, mummy, it looks like you magicked that there which I think is the best compliment that you can ever have about some art. So next up we have this one and this one has quite a few different layers. I can see that there's some writing underneath that looks like it was maybe done with a felt pen or something. There's also some, uh, maybe they're Tombow markers actually or alcohol markers on the very bottom layer. And then this piece here is actually a jelly printed piece of paper that's been cut out and stuck in, so sort of collaged in. There's also a Posca pen here with the green background and the orange shapes. I think that was the next layer on this page. So I would have drawn the shapes with the orange Posca pen and then filled in the background with the green. And that looks like that came over, not filling up the whole page. And then I used a small jelly plate, kind of like a stamp, so it was this sort of rectangular shape and I used acrylic paint with it. So you can see clearly there that blue rectangle is, is the shape of the jelly plate. And then I think this pinky shape here, that was also a jelly plate stamp. And it's gone over the top of the green Posca and changed the colour a little bit there. And then this orangey one here is another example. Looks like there's also some magenta paint here but maybe that's another gel plate stamping kind of print there. We've got Posca pen coming back in over the top of the other layers so we've got these green leaf type shapes. These are also Posca pens here and then the final layer is this collaged piece um, this image of the warty goblin gourd, which I just love because they're so fun to look at and draw. Oh, and also I've stamped a hole in the page there, but then when I've printed on, so that must have happened before I put the jelly plate on there because it's gone through onto the page underneath. It looks like maybe this blue stripey thing here is also a jelly plate stamp. Yeah, so lots of jelly plating in this spread. What I like about this spread is I just feel like there's so much going on. I really like the colours. I like this, the contrast of this pink with the green. There's lots of visual texture. And I think the layers really add to the richness of this spread. All right, so this is my last spread. I've got like hundreds more spreads, but I had to pick a few to show you in this video. And this is the last one I've got to show you today. This has got some writing with some with a ballpoint pen. The next layer was this kind of brownie colour. And that looks like something, it was probably paint that I had left over from another project and I just wanted to use it up. So I smeared it onto my page over the top of the writing. And obviously I had you know more than one colour on my palette because there's black and there's this kind of orangey ochre colour. And then this 
is one of those paper palettes that you you peel the layers off you can put your acrylic paint on it and it's kind of got this shiny finish and the idea is that they're disposable so you can peel it off and throw it away and so i decided to keep the little bits of the palette when it dried up so this square here is part of that and this square here is also part of that palette and then I have come in with the Posca pen, this blue. This is Posca pen that I've done over the top and this is a kind of a repeat pattern. I'm quite glad, usually I have the urge to fill up the whole page with the repeat pattern, but I really like it here that I've used it in a little bit, but then there's other areas where it isn't. And then the final piece is this stag head that I cut out of a magazine felt like it belonged on this spread so so that's where it ended up and I really like this spread I like the colors the ochre is again not a color that I would necessarily choose myself but it's really nice here with the bright blue and it's this, there's this little bit of bright blue here so you've got the contrast between the blue and the orangey brown I think there's lots of visual texture. You know, you can see here where the brush is quite dry. So you've got visual texture here and then with the writing underneath, the more layers you add, it kind of, sometimes it's very good to keep it simple and then you just get something that's really beautifully simple. But in other times, if you're not happy, if you just keep adding layers, eventually it'll just build up until the point where you have something that's really quite cool. Yeah, I really like this spread. So that's it for this video. And if you want to know more about my sketchbook course, I'll play a trailer for you at the end of this video. So stick around for that. And um, otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. OK, bye. I used to be so inhibited and such a perfectionist. But when I changed how I looked at my sketchbook, I was able to relax and let myself go and ultimately find a real sense of creative freedom. One of the reasons that I used to feel so inhibited about my sketchbook practice was the fact that I had lots of unspoken rules in my head. Especially when you're starting a new book, that first blank page can be so paralysing. When I started to see my sketchbook as a private place, I stopped worrying about how the final result would look and I started to focus more on how I felt while I was creating. In this online workshop, I will cover some mixed media techniques. I also cover the mindset and ways of approaching your sketchbook practice to keep you free and uninhibited and have a really joyful experience of keeping a sketchbook. I think of my sketchbook as my refuge from the world. It's somewhere that I come back to when I need some creative recharge time. This practice has been such a joyful and life-giving process for me. If I can pass it on to only one person, I'll be so happy.